Okay, so in this video, we're going to be focused on the spreadsheet encoding problem in Python. And that problem is we want to implement a function that converts a spreadsheet column ID to the corresponding integer. So what does that mean in the context of spreadsheets? Well, if you open up a spreadsheet program like this or Excel or anything like that, you'll notice that the columns of such a spreadsheet are denoted by these column IDs. So these are generally denoted as letters. So the first column in a spreadsheet like this is denoted as A, second one with B. If we keep going down all the way to Z, that's the 26th column, AA, AB, AC, AD, and so on. And it keeps going in that manner um, on and on. So what we want to do is we want to write a function that if we provide it with a column ID, that is we provide it with a string that would be found in the top row here, then we want to return a number that corresponds to the column with which that column ID represents. So for instance, if we feed our function the string A, the column ID A, we'd want our function to return a one because that represents the first column in this spreadsheet. Likewise, if we were to feed our function Z, so Z represents the 26th column, so we'd want to return the number 26. If we were to give it AA, again, we would return 27, AB, 28, and so on and so forth in that manner. So what I would suggest that you do is if you haven't seen this problem or if you're going through these videos to try to get some practice or just to um, you know, learn how to do these things, then I encourage you to pause the video at this point and to try to solve it on your own. And once you've taken a stab at it, go ahead and unpause the video and we'll step through it together using this approach. It's not the only approach, of course, but it's one approach that we can use. So once you've given it a try, what we're going to do, the key insight here is to think about the column ID as a base 26 number. We're essentially going to be converting that into a base 26 number. So if you haven't seen this problem before, or if you're trying to get some practice in, I'd encourage you to pause the video at this point and try to solve it on your own by just getting out a piece of paper and a, and a pen or a pencil and just working through it or thinking about how you might go about solving it. If you get stuck or if you solve it, then go ahead and unpause the video and we'll step through the solution that we propose in this video. So the key insight really is this problem is can be basically looked at as a problem of converting a string representing a base 26 number to the corresponding integer that we're interested in, except that in this case, a is going to correspond to one instead of zero. So before we get to base 26, let's think about base 10. So just think about the number 314 as you would probably regularly think about the number 314 that is in base 10. So another way that we can represent this number in base 10 is in the following way. This number is really representative of this equation here. This is really representing 3 times 100 plus 1 times 10 plus 4 times 1. So 3 is in the 100 spot, 1 is in the 10 spot, and 4 is in the 1 spot. So if we were to write this equation in terms of exponents, what we would get is 3 times 10 to the second plus 1 times 10 to the first plus 4 times 10 to the 0. So one way we could actually generate this expression is if we considered, let's say, the input of this as a string, what we would end up doing to arrive at this expression here is we would start off at the character on the far left, and we would say, okay, first of all, what is the length of this string? Again, we're reading this in as a string. So in this case, the length of the string is three. So what we can do is we can say, okay, starting here, we want this digit, the first digit that we're processing, multiplied by 10 to the n minus 1. So n is the length of the string, minus 1, so that gives us 3 times 10 to the second. So we proceed on to the next digit in the string that we're processing, and that's going to give us 1 times 10 to the n minus 2, so that'll give us 1. Again, n is the length of the string. And then we finish off here at the last element of the string, and that's going to give us 4 times 10 to the n minus 3, or 10 to the 0 in this case. So this approach is going to be similar to what we're going to do for the column ID and converting that to an integer. So again, we can think about the alphabet, the alphabetic characters, A through Z, representing the numbers 1, 2, and 26. So for instance, A is equal to 1, B is equal to 2, so on and so forth, Z is equal to 26. So if we wanted to convert, let's say, the column ID AA into a number, what we can do is follow a similar approach to what we did up here. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to start at the far left and we're going to follow a similar algorithm, only now we're going to multiply by 26 instead of 10. So that is, we're going to start here and we're going to say, okay, we're on the far left character. This A really represents 1, right? So it represents the number 1. 
So this is one times 26 to the n minus one. So the length of the string is two, n minus one is one, so that gives us this first term here. So moving on, we say plus the next element of the string, which again is a in this case. So a again represents this number one. So we say a or one times 26 to the n minus second power, which will give us zero in this case. So if we were to go ahead and evaluate this expression, we would get number 27, and that corresponds to the appropriate uh, number for this ID AA. So that's going to be the general approach that we're going to take to this problem. And now we're going to go over to terminal and code this up in Python. So I just have a terminal opened here uh, in an editor and I've gone ahead and created a prototype function for the encoding. So this is spreadsheet encode column. It will take a string and then it will return the number that we want for that for that particular column ID. So, and I have some encoding tests here that will run once we actually fill out the logic of this function. So of course right now they don't do anything, but we should see, if we were to run these functions, we should see 1, 27 as we know from the example on the slides, and then this I know evaluates the 702. So we should see output of those numbers for these three respective examples. So let's go ahead and follow through the algorithm that we outlined on the slides in the function here. Let's move up here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to define a variable num. So num is going to be the final number that we're going to return at the end of the function. We'll just initialize that to zero. And then we're also going to define a variable that we'll call count. Count is going to be the exponent. So this is going to be what we're going to raise 26 to the power of. So count in initially is going to be equal to the length of the column string minus one. So remember, if we go back to the slides, we started off on the far left of the string that we're processing, and then the thing that we're multiplying by is 26, that's our base, times n minus one, so the length of the string minus one, and then we keep decrementing that exponent by one every time we process part of that string. So we're gonna go through a loop now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna process each character in the column string that we're given. So we're gonna say for s in column string, we're going to do the following thing. So we're going to cumulatively add to our number that we've defined above, and we're going to do so in a similar way that we did on the slides. So we're going to, th this is basically what we're continually adding. We're doing this multiplication here, and then we want to keep adding the next one in the list until we get to the end of the string. So we're gonna say num plus equal 26 to the power count times, and then here's where we're going to fill this in in a little bit. This is going to be the numeric representation of the character that we're processing in the string. And I'll, I'm going to fill this in later because there's a bit of a trick that we can use in Python to easily obtain this number. But assuming that we get that, we're going to accumulate the total in num, and then we're going to decrement count by one. So we're going to say count is equal to count minus one. And then at the end of this loop, we should have the final number that we're after, and we're just going to return num. So let's go back to this part over here. So this is where we want to represent the current character that we're processing in the string as a number. So for instance, if I go back to the slides, we process each of these one by one, and we want some way of extracting the information that this character here that we're processing corresponds to the number one. If we were, let's say, processing the character B, we'd also want some way of saying that B corresponds to the number two or C corresponds to the number three. So we want an easy way for us to do that. So let's go over to a terminal that I have open here and I've opened up a Python shell. So in Python, there's a function called ORD, O-R-D. So basically what this function does is we give it a character, so a string of length one, and it returns an integer that represents a Unicode code point of the character when that argument is a Unicode object. So what does that mean? So let's just go through an example. If we were to feed the character A into this function, it would give us the Unicode code point, so the number that's, that's representative of the character A, in this case, is 65. And if we proceed through the alphabet, so if we keep going through the alphabet sequentially, B corresponds to the next number, 66, C corresponds to the next number, 67, and we can keep going in this way all the way down to Z, and the numbers increase in the same space as the alphabetic characters in the alphabet increase. So we can use a difference of the character that we're processing and the, and the character A to determine what relative number the character that we're on represents.
So let's actually see an example. Let's consider an example. Say that our string that we're processing is a, b. And say that as we're going through our for loop, we're on the character b. So let's say c is equal to the character b. So what we want to do is we want to figure out what, how can we represent that character that we're processing as the number 2. So what we can do is we can take a difference of that character, so specifically a difference of the ord of that character, with the ord of a plus 1, and that will give us what we're after. So let's just write that out. So if we say ord of the character that we are processing minus ord of a plus 1, this is going to give us the number 2. So why is that? Well, that's because ord of a, again, corresponds to 65. Ord of c, in this case, the character c, corresponds to the letter b. We take the difference of those two things, which is 1, and then if we add 1 to that, that gives us 2, which is the right number. So for instance, if we were, let's say our character was c in this case, and we ran the same expression, so now we'll get 3, because there's a difference of 3 between the ord of a and the ord of c, plus 1. So that's going to give us the number for whatever character that we're processing in the column string. So I hope that made sense. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to more or less copy this equation here, this code, and move that over here. So we're going to, again, what we're doing here is we're saying num plus equal 26 to the power times, uh, 26 to the power count times this thing that represents the current character in the string that we're processing. So how do we represent that again? Well, we say ord of, in this case, the string that we're, the character that we're processing is s minus ord of a, and then we add one to that. So that should give us the proper number for whatever character we're processing in the column string. So the rest of the function appears to be completed. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this, make sure that it actually works as expected. And again, what we should see here, let me just put it in the comments what we expect to see. This should give us a column of one. Uh, this should give us a column of 27, and then this last one I know should give us a column of 702. So I'm just going to clear the terminal and then try to give this a run. So Python spreadsheet, spreadsheet encoding.py. So if we run that, indeed we get the numbers 1, 27, and 702. So it seems like it worked as expected. So that pretty much does it for this video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. As always, this code is going to be hosted on my GitHub page, and the link to that will be in the, in the description of this video. So thanks again for watching, and have a great day. Bye.